The Unshackled Waves, episode 142. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Now on the Unshackled Waves, I normally have a co-host or a guest who I have a discussion with, but today I thought I'd do a solo show. I haven't done one of those in a while. Now, normally I keep my rants in article form, but I thought, uh, why not do this one in a podcast? So the topic that I wanted to explore today is, are free markets out of favour? Now, I still call myself a libertarian. I was in the libertarian movement for seven years and free markets are one of its core principles. I still believe in uh, freer markets, uh, freer people, but I am aware that the free market is becoming increasingly unpopular, both on the left and the right side of politics, but I also understand why. So let's go back to the beginning and let's see where the free market consensus, which we've had up until this point, uh, started. So it began in the 1980s in the United States. Uh, Ronald Reagan, as president, introduced uh, tax cuts and deregulation uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, Margaret Thatcher came in with uh, privatisation, uh, reducing the, the power of the union movement, and uh, they were both uh, conservative leaders. But in Australia, it was the Labor hawk Keating uh, governments that began the process of deregulation and privatisation and also uh, free trade as well. Now, this continued under uh, John Howard, who was definitely a free market ideologue. Uh, he was very uh, anti-socialist, still is today. And it was interesting, John Howard, of course, won uh, four elections on his uh, platform of smaller government and fiscal responsibility. But uh, Kevin Rudd in 2007 sold himself to the electorate as a fiscal conservative. Of course, we know that you know, in the Rudd and Gillard governments, that didn't occur. They were big spending governments with incredible amounts of waste, uh, pink bats, uh, school halls, uh, laptop for all uh, students. Uh, however, a small government was still advocated during this time. There was you know, a huge backlash against the, the debt and deficit that was uh, blowing out and you know, all the, all the uh, new spending policies that kept wanting to be announced. And in opposition, uh, Tony Abbott and Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey uh, promised to, to get the bad budget back into surplus. Uh, it was interesting, uh, reflecting on Tony Abbott's 2010 campaign, it was, uh, uh, we'll stop the big new taxes, we'll cut Labor's wasteful spending, uh, will repay pay the debt, and uh, the final one was uh, stop the boats, but that's not relevant for, for this discussion. So they went into the 2013 election uh, saying they wanted to, to fix the budget emergency, as they called it, and Joe Hockey made that uh, infamous speech, the a end of entitlement is over. Now, in the United States, uh, uh, Barack Obama was elected in 2008 and he promised a, a bigger government, but there was a huge backlash to his uh, spend and uh, deficit policies. And that's where the Tea Party was uh, was born. Uh, that was about you know, small government uh, returning to the, the Constitution. It was really about you know reducing uh, the size of government. Obviously, their main uh, focus was opposition to uh, Obamacare, what they viewed as the, the government takeover over of healthcare and also wanting a uh, balanced budget. There were even some people who wanted a, a balanced budget amendment. So when did things change exactly? Well, things began to change in Australia after the 2014 uh, federal budget, the first Abbott Hockey budget. Uh, there were modest uh, welfare and social services cuts, such as the $7 co-payment and the uh, we uh, waiting for the um, dole or, uh, or earning and learning. Uh, that was uh, that was vicious uh, community opposition to it. And of course, there was the uh, claim that um, the government had broken promises because was uh, Tony Abbott the night before the election, we don't know why he said it, but said no cuts to health, no cuts to education, and no cuts to the ABC and SBS. Of course, the Senate uh, blocking all of these budget measures didn't help. I remember there was Clive Palmer vowing to block all of these uh, budget budget savings, and you know, if, despite you know selling himself as you know person who was pro business, really advocated big government. In the United States, it uh, probably began this big government push 
uh, in the 2016 presidential cycle. Uh, Bernie Sanders uh, ran as the you know, left-wing candidate for the Democratic Party. He was a self-described democratic socialist. Uh, he Not only did he do surprisingly well, but he also dragged Hillary Clinton, whose husband, Bill Clinton, in the 90s was a what you call a third-way uh, Democrat, a, a centrist. She uh, uh, became more and more uh, socialist in what she was advocating. And Trump, uh, you know, despite the Republican Party being one of, you know, small government and, you know, given just five years ago, they'd had the Tea Party, you know, wanting to reduce the, the size of government. Trump campaigned on uh, protection protectionism, uh, increasing infrastructure spending. He didn't want to touch uh, the, the big uh, budget items in the United States, Social Security, Medicare, and only really wanted Obamacare light. He said he wanted to repeal and replace Obamacare, uh, but in, instead he you know, just wanted a skinned down version. And of course, in 2015, we saw uh, Jeremy Corbyn elected as uh, leader of the, the UK Labour Party, and he was deemed uh, unelectable. Even uh, the people in his own party didn't think uh, that you know, he, he had a hope in hell of ever, ever becoming prime minister. Uh, however, just uh, two years later, uh, Theresa May called a snap election. Everyone thought that she would increase their majority, but it turned out to be a hung parliament and Theresa May just hung on. And now Jeremy Corbyn is, uh, according to the polls, looks like he'll be the next prime minister of the United Kingdom when uh, the next election is called. Now, going back to Australia, this uh, big government push was really turbocharged post the 2016 uh, federal election. Uh, since then, Bill Shorten has unveiled a huge swag of big government policies. Obviously, he's opposed the, the company tax cuts, or as, as he proposed, tax cuts to millionaires writing a big business a blank check. Uh, he, wa he said he wants to tear up the nation's workplace laws, which uh, Labor actually wrote. It was the, the Rudd Gillard workplace laws, but apparently um, they're no good for workers. Obviously, there's the Labor policy of ending negative gearing. And there's also their latest policy to eliminate uh, franking credits for share dividends. That's been, everyone was saying, oh, there'll be a huge backlash to that. But you know, it hasn't uh, hindered uh, Shorten and Labor's lead in the, in the polls, which shows that, you know, it's, you know, it hasn't really, you know, hasn't been this, you know, huge backlash and people, you know, aren't really bothered by it. And of course, uh, Sally McManus, the new ACTU secretary, is seen as uh, calling the shots. Let's remember she's launched the Change the Rules uh, campaign where she wants to uh, have new laws to regulate uh, casual work and independent uh, contracting. And uh, Bill Shorten, this was about a year ago, said that as Prime Minister uh, and under Labor, uh, his uh, promise would be to fight inequality uh, wherever he saw it. And even though the Turnbull government's, you know, attacking uh, Bill Shorten as, you know, wanting to start, you know, class warfare is the most left-wing Labor leader uh, in history, it's not cutting through. The Australian people look at that, you know, he's tough on, you know, big business, wants to protect workers. They, the Australian public think that's really good. And let's have a look at the, the Liberals. Yes, they call, you know, Labor uh, far left, but, you know, the Liberals have committed to uh, Labor's health and education funding. Uh, obviously, they're hamstrung with what the, the Senate allows them to do, but still, uh, they're not fighting for that. And they're also not fighting for uh, workplace uh, reform. Obviously, they're still spooked by the work choices election loss, which uh, happened in 2007, and also businesses pretty much given up on work workplace laws, I mean, and they've also given up basically on tax cuts as well. I mean, all they did in the, uh, the recent uh, company tax cuts debate was just write a letter to the politicians. What, what, what's that going to do? So, you know, if, if, you know, business isn't doing the heavy lifting, then the Liberals aren't going to be bothered with doing anything themselves. The corporations these days, they spend more time campaigning on social justice issues. It sort of seems that they accept that they're viewed as, you know, these evil, greedy people. And so as this, you know, uh, guilt, they, they seem to campaign on social justice to say to the public, see, we're not evil, you know, we care about, you know, marriage equality and, you know, Indigenous rights and, and the environment and, uh, you know, please don't, you know, uh, bash us uh, anymore. Uh, so they sort of realise how how unpopular they are. And people on the right have also turned against free markets as well. There's uh, 
obviously a big area of the budget spend is pensions. There's a lot of support for decent uh, pension for uh, retirees. And uh, there used to be in Australia a lot of beating up of so-called dole bludgers, but uh, there's a lot of advocacy for, you know, decent unemployment benefits. Uh, uh, I know that when, you know, welfare re reform is proposed, I see a lot of people on the right say, how about the politicians reform their own welfare? Uh, protectionism and state ownership is beginning to be favoured again. Obviously, there's a lot of opposition to free trade agreements, especially with China, and there was a lot of opposition on the right to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And it was interesting, uh, Tony Abbott's uh, recent proposal to nationalise the Liddell Power Station, that actually had uh, a lot of support uh, from uh, conservatives, e even though um, it, it was widely seen as being against uh, Liberal Party traditions. And Malcolm Turnbull tried to argue that the Liberal Party was, uh, you know, founded on opposing uh, nationalisation. So uh, conservatives uh, on the right have really turned against, you know, free markets, and they also believe that, you know, government should be there to, you know, help people and also, you know, steer the, the country in the right direction. So why is this so? Why has there been this turn against the, the free market? Uh, I think partly is because free market uh, ideologues have, have stopped arguing. They thought that this consensus between uh, you know, the left and right on free markets that began in the 80s would last forever. They didn't think that uh, you know, socialism, you know, social democracy, uh, big government would ever make a comeback. So they've given up reinforcing the case for, for free markets. And they also think that, you know, because people like the benefits of free markets and capitalism, they like having, you know, an iPhone, a flat screen TV and like driving Uber, Uber that they'll, you know, respect the, the free markets. That's, that's just a simplistic uh, uh, argument. And there's also, I believe, from... Uh, uh, believers of the free market is that uh, there's a degree of talking down to people who are skeptical. It's like, oh, how come you don't understand that, you know, free markets are, you know, awesome. And there's also this belief that, you know, freedom will just sell itself, that you just need to say, you know, look how cool all of these, you know, riches are that we get from, you know, capitalism. You should definitely support it. Like, uh, you know, being simplistic, it doesn't it doesn't work like that because people they see, especially in the media on a, da a daily basis, you know, corporations behaving badly, you know, workers, um, you know, being exploited, and so their natural tendency is towards you know a big government, and so I think just you know away you know waving uh, you know uh, technology and. Uh, you know, like successful business stories, that's that's not enough. But probably the big uh, reason why free markets have, have fallen out of favour is, as I mentioned before, business and other uh, stakeholders have pretty much given up the uh, the cause. I mean, there's no, been no uh, heavy heavy lifting from from these other organisations. I mean, it's going to take more than you know one person, uh, one. Uh, movement or uh, one organisation to, you know, change this turn against the, the free market. Obviously, what's also argued that the reason why free markets are falling out of favour is because uh, real wages uh, are not increasing. And this is why, you know, Bill Shorten's uh, uh, argument that you need to spread the wealth around is uh, gaining traction. Obviously, as a free market advocate, I have my own uh, ideas about, you know, why, um, you know, that is the case. Obviously, we, the federal government and state governments introduced uh, so many new regulations uh, every year. And obviously, the environment environmental or uh, green tape uh, has really uh, shackled down uh, our economy. And so I think also that that's another argument that the free market advocates can, you know, adopt that, you know, all these regulations, you know, they, they, they don't just, you know, restrain the corporations, they, they actually restrain the you know, uh, ordinary person and also the small business person. And I think another reason why free markets have fallen out of favour is because of their uh, association with globalism, that uh, there's a lot of uh, multinational corporations who, you know, work together with the, the European Union the, and the United Nations. And, you know, this is tied to, you know, obviously uh, more open borders, you know, more, um, uh, you know, refu refugee movements. And so people have grown really sceptical about, you know, the, um, you know, what... Uh, corporations uh, you know up to and they also see the the influence of people like you know George Soros so uh, you know what he uses his money for and you know they don't associate that you know with with, with something good and so uh, I really think that you know we need to you know cont uh, 
go back to, you know, free markets, you know, not from a global perspective. I mean, yes, you know, globalization, uh, obviously free trade between nations is good, but you need to localize, you know, the arguments for, you know, free markets, you know, why, uh, why they will be good for, you know, the, the ordinary person, you know, in, in the street. You, you know, you need to stop talking in the abstract that, you know, we're, we're part of, you know, a global community because, you know, the, the nation state is still, you know, what people value as, you know, most important. So you need to, you know, say, you know, why is, you know, free markets, you know, good for, good for us? Like, don't talk about, you know, the people on the other side of the world, you know, where we should look after ourselves first. And so I think that's also why, you know, you're seeing this trend, you know, towards, you know, protectionism as well. I will still personally support free markets where I can, but I respect the views of those who have become more sceptical. Certainly, I won't uh, chastise them. I think it's important if you do believe in free markets to make the case, you know, respectfully understand people's concerns about, you know, the working class and, you know, when corporations do, you know, take undertake unscrupulous conduct. Uh, obviously, you know, big government, it does not work. It's never worked. You know, we see the end results in places like, you know, Venezuela and, and Cuba. But it's important when it does fail, then that's the time to make the case for change. Uh, free market uh, advocates, they really need to understand that economic reform uh, is a long game. Uh, we are just in a big government cycle uh, at the moment. You will have noticed that throughout history, uh, you know, uh, different ideologies, you know, come and go. Uh, everybody thought that, you know, after the Berlin Wall uh, fell down, that socialism and communism, you know, wouldn't be able to make a serious co comeback, but they are beginning to. I would say that there's no need to despair. I mean, you know, when you see the polls against, you know, uh, privatisation, uh, you know, don't just, you know, give up. Um, simply, you know, refine, you know, your, your advocacy. Sit back and reflect. Don't, you know, uh, f there, there's this terrible tendency for, for people to just say, oh, well, the others are stupid and I'm right and, uh, you know, f uh, f nobody can see, uh, you know, my genius. You need to, you know, understand like I was saying before, you know, understand where your um, opponents are coming from and, you know, try to, uh, try to, you know, reason with them, but also bide your time. You're not going to convince people of the benefits of uh, free markets tomorrow. I mean, you're not one argument away from, you know, people, you know, loving capitalism and liberty and, you know, all the other uh, freedom, freedom stuff. It's, uh, like, you know, you just look at, you know, uh, Eastern Europe, for example. I mean, they're some of the most freest economies now, but that's only because, you know, they saw the, the horrors of central planning for, for 45 years. And so they've learnt to uh, respect it, unfortunately. Uh, you know, it takes a period of, you know, big government and, you know, economic decline for, for people to realise that, you know, we really need to, you know, change tax. So it's important for, you know, people who believe in the free market to, turn up, to bide your time and, you know, propose the, the right policies at the right time. That's just how, you know, things work. I mean, you know, we've, you know, gotten so, you know, wealthy over the past 25 years, you know, with the um, uh, process of deregulation, privatisation, free trade, that especially the young have forgotten, you know, how important this is to prosperity. So, you know, it's, that's the reason why we go through this uh, cycle. So uh, it's really important, I think, that, you know, you don't, you know, bang your head against the wall, you know, you just understand, you know, why we're in this situation, you know, understand the the arguments that are, that are being put forward and, you know, m make sure that, you know, you can adjust your, you know, arguments and proposals uh, that, you know, people will be more receptive to it. So I hope that gives you a uh, pause for thought. I intend to do uh, more of these style shows in the future. So um, I'll think of some other topics I can have a bit of a rant about and uh, let me know your thoughts and uh, other uh, topics you'd like to see me uh, give my views on. So that's the show for today. I'd like to remind everyone about the upcoming events the Unshackled will be present at. There's the Justice for Jalal rally. Jalal was a 13-year-old boy who was hit and killed by an unlicensed African driver who only received 80 hours community service uh, for that crime. It will be on uh, Sunday the 15th of April at 1pm at Victoria's Parliament House. 
There's also the rally against uh, safe schools on Saturday the 21st of April at 1pm also at Victoria's Parliament House. Uh, this is being held to coincide with the National Sex Ed Sit-Out on Monday the 23rd of April. Uh, so I hope that you can join us for both of those in, Mel in the Melbourne area. As people on the right, they really need to get out on the streets and uh, start you know, making the politicians take note. Also, don't forget, if you want to take the Unshackled even further and score some awesome rewards, please consider becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash the Unshackled. Also, don't forget, we have our online store, Upright Market, where you can purchase Unshackled merchandise and other gear for right-thinking people. So thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.